Welcome back everybody to Pop Culture Conspiracy. I'm your host T and in this video I'm going to be talking about Victoria Monet, Normani, and Coco Jones. I think that they are all some girls with potential. They're like the emerging R&B girls. They're not super mainstream yet but again like they have potential with the right songs, with the right development, with the right marketing like they really could go far. But to be really honest, it took me some time and like really just going out and getting additional inspiration to even want, really want to make this video. I almost didn't make it because I was like, you know what? Like, I'm not interested in these girls. Like, I used to be super interested in Normani. Like, I really liked her. I wanted to see her win. But Normani just has had some other stuff going on, which I will talk about later on in the video. I'm going to go in depth with it. So she's kind of like fallen off a little bit like over the years and as far as Victoria Monet and Coco Jones I've already heard some things by Victoria Monet and I just really don't like her music that much and as far as Coco Jones she's another new girl who I just haven't been interested in like she hasn't put out anything yet that has made me want to discover her so I didn't even know what she sang before I really looked into this girl and like did this video but I gave all of their music like a chance I rewatched Normani's motivation video I really really did put in the time to make sure that I've at least heard these girls and seen their videos and kind of like just seeing their art before I just give an opinion based off of the little bit that I know about them because then that my my video would be super biased and jaded and I have to say like coming out of this like I don't feel too much different from what I originally felt but there's a new person who I think is actually who I'm actually kind of I am rooting for I had only heard like a snippet like a small snippet of like a Coco Jones song before I did this video and I did not remember it I just remember like oh she does have a pretty good voice and I went back and I listened to some more stuff and I'm like oh okay like she can really sing so let me just go ahead and hop in without further ado of course please like share and subscribe and let's talk in the comments so I'm going to start off with Victoria Monet I think she's talented with mainstream potential. She's most known for writing several hits for Ariana Grande and many more people in the industry. She used to be signed to Atlantic Records. Um, that's, I think, part of, like, the big part of her being super close with Ariana Grande because Ariana Grande was over there at Atlantic 2, and last I checked, she is still there. So, Victoria Monet used to be on Atlantic with Ariana Grande, but now she is signed to RCA Records. And I have noticed in the last few years RCA Records is really like signing some great artists they're a label that and you know they've been around for a long time but I feel like their popularity has kind of died down in the last few years like I've really heard a lot about Rock Nation, Atlantic, Republic or Epic you know Empire you hear kind of these labels like more in the industry Universal whatever whatever um, Columbia but like you just really haven't heard RCA lately, just in my opinion. But now that I've done some research, I'm just like, hmm, like over the last few years, like y'all have been quietly, seems like just picking up some artists. Like they've picked up Lotto, who they're, they, who they're putting a lot of marketing and money behind. And they've picked up Doja Cat, who they're also putting a shit ton of marketing and money behind. They also have signed Normani, but you can see who they choose to put money behind and and not so something to just think about but victoria monet is all signed is also signed to uh, rca records and i think you know maybe they're trying to like put some money into her they're trying to like launch her and see how well like her new song on my mama you know uh sticks um so she is on the come up victoria is on the come up she just released again on my mama it came with um a song and a music video they did put a lot of budget in the music video um but i think she is making mistakes okay i don't think it was smart and i'm tired of people doing this and this is a part of a ritual which i just found out about called a nostalgia ritual i'm tired of artists sampling get an original song 
I thought you were an artist. I thought you make stuff for a living. I didn't think you were uh, a DJ who remixes already crafted and composed songs for a living. Like, I'm going to need people to start really, like, restructuring, like, some of the titles in the music industry. It's a lot of motherfuckers who claim that they rap, but they just recite. You know what I mean? Like, it's a lot of people who claim that they produce, but all they do is sample. Like, it's a lot of people who sing, but who say that they sing, but all they do is, like, talk, sing, or sing, rap. Like, I'm exhausted. I'm exhausted. And I'm tired of the sampling. Victoria's sampling on my mama it's like okay you did a decent job you did a decent r&b edition of on my mama which is a popular song by rapper ace hood but i think that it also goes to show just how dead r&b is people stay running around saying oh hip-hop is dead rap is dead rap is dying but r&b is flat out motherfucking dead and i think a r&b singer sampling a rapper and trying to slow down his song and really didn't add much to the record i think that that shows that r&b music is like indeed dead because it shows that rap music is even influencing uh r&b like people are trying to you know really get like this rap edge in r&b and to be honest you know r&b and rap have been friends over the years but especially in a day and age like right now i just wish the girls were trying to um separate themselves and do something original and even on a even on a more basic level you sample something even if you want to work with a rapper and make like a, a rap slash r&b song um you should have got with an up-and-coming rapper or popular rappers to create an original new song sampling a old hip-hop song was really not the smartest move in my opinion but as i've learned it, this is a strategy that artists do because again when you sample something people already know the song they already like the song so the song has a better chance at being successful and okay you know you play the game however you want to play but the song in my opinion is just okay the lyrics are not there she really didn't do much or add much lyrically to the song besides just slowing it down and putting some different instrumentation on there so again like i just don't think it was anything like that i would that i just would say is just oh like really adding something to the game no i don't um i think it's great that she had ace hood in the video but overall like the video was great you know th th this is this is something that labels love to do give you a, you know a million dollar or a fucking music video and give you five dollars to go do your song in the studio and now we dealing with situations like this you know so all right you know music industry fuckery but let me think another song by victoria that sounds a little bit different than this is ass like that i have heard that song that's some a song that uh this girl i used to know used to like and i just was like um you know i heard it for myself i think it sounds okay but i don't like the lyrics um i just think lyrically that's my problem with or that's my problem with victoria i don't like her lyrics i think her music is uh her lyrics are lackluster they are very simple they push too much sex all her music is about sex like i don't like her music i just don't i don't like her i don't like her music i think she's a decent looking girl people th i think she's a good writer she does she makes good music for ariana but i just like her own music i just don't fucking like it like everything she does is raunchy and i'm sick of that i've been saying that like i'm sick of raunchy ass over sexualized women in the music industry i'm tired i was just complaining about uh SZA with this bullshit summer walker i've been saying that like they didn't pimp the r&b girls and turned them out like i'm sick of it I, I victoria Monet's music is too raunchy it's too sexual our music is about body and ass and it's all about f carnal stuff it's all about physical stuff because ass like that is i think a good workout song if you're trying to be a hoe in the gym because it's too raunchy to like really motivate you to work out like on some serious shit like i just can't i just can't so 
you know, to be honest with you, Summer and SZA and SZA, Summer Walker and SZA are astronomically better, in my opinion. They both have better lyrics, more relatable music, deeper music, deeper messages, and that's a lot caught you talking about them too but to be honest like they they are where they are because even though they're new age r&b girls which i've complained about their music is still relatable those two women are still making music that like that resonates so that's why again they had their spot victoria needs to go back to the drawing board i feel like i don't know how much the industry wants to push her I don't really see it for her, but she's doing what the industry wants her to do. She's pushing the Lilith agenda. Her music is all super sexual. She had a bunch of red symbolism in her uh, on, my, on my mama music video. So, you know, maybe she'll continue to get pushed. I'm starting to feel like there is some occult stuff going on between her and Ariana because have you seen Ariana Grande recently? Ariana Grande looks shriveled up. And like she is starving and losing her hair. And then all of a sudden, right when she's getting like her big, big, you know, or right, right when Ariana is looking like a damn albino raisin, now we have Victoria Monet getting label push. You know, going going kind of viral, getting a buzz, really starting to like get some of the uh, budget that people have been wanting her to have. So I just feel like, hmm, like, and now Ariana looks like shit. So maybe they was using ariana's energy for maybe they were using victoria's energy at first for ariana and now they're using ariana's energy for monet's come up you never know it's the music industry let's talk about it in the comments then i'm gonna get on normani i feel like with normani like we were rooting for her but right now it's getting shelled she again is also signed to rca i feel like i like normani from the little bit i know about her she seems like a sweet girl i do think that she's talented um i used to want to see her win like everybody else but i'm starting to feel kind of indifferent i kind of feel like just go home like the industry just probably isn't for you um but the biggest problem that people have with her or that they're complaining about is a lack of releasing or too many gaps between releasing um and this is a real thing like waves was like her debut song as a solo artist but it had a feature on it okay and that came out with black but that was six years ago oh no, no no five years ago waves came out five years ago then she came out with motivation which was like her big like solo uh, single that featured like a big budget music video but that was four years ago and we still haven't seen much progress and then after motivation i recall her coming out with wild side with cardi b which was a complete flop and a mess sonically image wise like it was just horrible and then another rap collab in the r&b which wasn't really needed because cardi b did not add to that song at all and then she released fair and then i haven't heard anything else that has made a buzz so i just feel like with her doing like i just have noticed her image again like continuing to be more sexual over the years for no reason there's really no reason to be making normani a sexual girl a sexual artist like it, her music doesn't need to go in that direction her image doesn't need to go in that direction she's another girl who kind of reminds me of chloe bailey like she's you can smell the wholesomeness in her from five miles away so we don't believe it we don't buy it a big part of the industry and the agenda and success is yes being believable people don't like what daniva said about chloe but chloe is not believable she does give church girl trying to lash out like and rebel it's not believable it looks like an act it looks like a fucking get up and the jig is up and we're not feeling it and she, you know and it's the sad thing is chloe is not on this list she has the most clout because of her association to the carters but her music ain't popping at all another girl who had a big budget music video with a whack-ass song that went fucking double saran rap 
like fucking mess like come on i'm sick of these girls she's another one who you know just is i've been telling y'all i have a whole video about chloe go back and watch it if you would like but normani wild side was a mess i was so mad to see her sitting up there with cardi b which she asked and as far as the song waves waves wasn't a bad song it was the last song by her that i actually did really like I feel like Waves was the most authentically Normani that we're kind of going to get at this point. Motivation was a mess, super forgettable, you know, and she messed up, once again, nostalgia ritual. Shouldn't have been sitting up there imitating Beyonce's crazy, crazy in love and having a video that referenced a bunch of other popular old school videos. Be original. Be original. Do something that we haven't seen before. Be original. Be believable. Be relatable. And you have to have some type of authenticity in there for it to all come together. Like, it just, motivation is not, was not memorable. You know, the video was better than the song. It just wasn't memorable. And the video didn't stick like grits either. It was supposed to, but it didn't. So, I'm not feeling it like it just is a mess. And I feel so bad for Namani because, again, like, I think she's talented. I think she's a sweetheart. But I just feel like a lot of what's going on with her, for real, is dark magic. I'm not even playing. Because look at who she surrounds herself with. Like, she was sitting up there being managed by Rock Nation via her, via her record label, S10, back when I think she was with uh, Fifth Harmony. And I don't know how long this management stuff lasts. I know a lot of her, her stuff online is kind of ambiguous. But Rock Nation did have a hand in Normani's management at one point. And then next thing you know, she's bopping on down to the Rock Nation brunch. And you see her posted up with the Carters. And then you see her posted up with Cardi B, with Wild Side. And it's just like, that's your problem. Your problem is witches. All of them witches. These girls will watch any movie but rosemary's baby they've been telling you the people in the industry is about that dark magic they're about spells and rituals and all type of deep dark demonic shit and that is what normani is victim of because i can tell that a lot of what is happening around her is bigger than her she would like us to believe that it's just um that it's just her parents having cancer and the yada 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 that's not it normani i'm not buying it I feel like if you was really on your grind, like your parents being sick or not in between taking care of them, you would still be barely getting sleep, sleeping in the damn studio, running back and forth to the studio, releasing music. But oh, you can't. You can't release. You might be recording like a, like a dog. You might be hustling, working up a sweat, busting your ass. You might really be recording, but they're not releasing shit. They're not promoting shit. And... You know, again, you were artist. You locked in a slave deal. You probably can't even like how like girl. These people be in such shitty deals, bro. The label paying for all your studio time, and and they the ones who tell you when to go to work and when to not go to work and when they're gonna release your work and when they're gonna sell your work and how they're gonna sell it and you know who they're gonna sell it to. It's just like come on. This is what I be talking about. Like I thought you became an artist so you could be free, yo. Like, come on. So, I don't know what's going on with Normani, but I know they got somebody that got it out for her. And I hate that. Like, I wish that Normani could just, like, thrive. Because I think that she has what it takes. I just think that she's kind of being worked against a little bit. And then I want to move on to talk about Coco Jones. I think Coco Jones is Normani's replacement. I feel like she's getting pushed. I feel like she's got marketing dollars behind her just based on like what I've seen. She's got a rise in popularity. But I just feel like I don't really like her music all that much so far. I feel like she needs better songs, but I feel like she's the best vocally. I think she's the most vocally talented. She can sing her butt off. She has a beautiful voice. Her voice is very like soulful and sultry. So I think that that really helps her i think that's what's going to help her over the other girls with with um reaching mainstream success but so far i'm just like not really resonating with like 
just the song content i think a lot of her songs again she's using samples um which i just you guys know i just really wish it would just chill come up with something original so she's doing a lot of sampling music um like with the song double back great vocals but it's not original the song i see you shows her vocals but i feel like i've heard it before and then i heard her song moment of your life with brent fayaz which i do think was a smart move because he's a bigger artist and it's really smart to work with male r&b singers i think the r&b girls and boys need to get together and collab but i think the song was again like just forgettable like i thought it was going to be good because brent fayaz is known to make good music and he has his hits out there but moment of your life again just like didn't really hit for me like that it was a forgettable song all about sex it's just tiring and i'm again like i'm gonna need originality i'm gonna need new content i'm gonna need different subjects like there's more to talk about in the world than sex and being freaky like there's people who do real shit every day they wake up they go to work they're really dealing with like real life so okay um so i'm not a fan just yet but i'd like to hear again better songs um i think none of what i've really heard besides what double back is like memorable like i don't really like scissor like that i don't think scissor can really sing but her song snooze like after doing the review and you know of the video like it kind of is stuck in my head and i think that that's how you know a song is good a person doesn't really have to be a good singer nobody really has to be a good singer anymore the music has to sound good and be memorable and that was that's what goes along with like the melody and stuff like that is what you remember and like normani victoria monet they don't really have anything that's like sticking that's like memorable to me just yet i think coco jones is kind of on her way with double back but she still just has more road to travel with really creating like a hit that's gonna like really shake up the game so let's talk in the comments about what y'all think about that but overall what all these girls have in common they all have big video budgets for mediocre music i noticed that with scissor too like scissor's music is memorable um but she's got these big budgets and it's just like i don't know like i feel like the the, the music videos and the, the budget really don't warrant the music like or the music doesn't warrant the budget you know what i mean like i don't know um i think their songs so far out of victoria coco and normani their songs all lack originality lyrically um they need better in different subjects and i think coco is the one who is only uh shining like vocally um i think she's also smart for being the only one that i can that i've seen because i guess you could say I don't know if they want to consider black an R&B singer or a rapper, but Normani had that collab with black, but um, which was smart. And then Coco has the collab with Brent Fayez. So that's smarter than Victoria, you know, take notes. But I see it for Coco the most. After listening to her and listening to the other girls and really like going to get some info, I, I see it for Coco the most. I think she's good looking. I get a vibe about her that she is a little bit more cut for the industry than Normani. She was also at the Rock Nation brunch, so she is doing her work. And now we are kind of seeing she's getting a push. She's getting some of these collabs, some of these placements. So let's just see. In about a year who is still here but i think coco might be the winner in this so again give me your opinions you don't have to agree i like different perspectives because y'all think about things that i would have never thought about so let's talk please like share and subscribe love y'all talk to y'all the next one bye